graphic designer in growth and uh, this is a UX scorecard on creating a non-goal schedule and escalation policies. Um, so if you're not familiar with the UX scorecard process, it's basically a heuristic process when we start by identifying the job to be done, who are the user and what's their desired outcome, map out a user's journey, uh, so what is the current process to get to the desired outcome, and we end up by grading the experience uh, based on UX heuristics and a grading model that we have. Uh, so who are the personas and job to be done for uh, creating a non-call schedule? Uh, so the personas are DevOps engineers, software developer, and system administrator. Uh, and we have really two jobs to be done here. Um, so one for the on-call schedule and one for escalation policies, but they really work together. Uh, so for on-call schedule, the first one is I want to set up on-call schedule to handle my alerts so I can be confident that if an alert is firing, the appropriate people will be paged. The second one for escalation policy is I want to set up escalation policy for my on-call schedule so I can be confident that even if the first person page to review not, isn't available, someone else will be notified. Um, so the flows, I just to like broke down this call card into two key flows. Um, so the main one is creating an on-call schedule and escalation policy as a maintainer in a paid uh, group or project. The reason for that is that because on-call schedules and escalation policies are both a paid feature and part of the premium plan. And also to be able to uh, use those features, you need to be the maintainer of um, your group or project. Uh, but I also choose to look at it from the angle of uh, someone that doesn't have the maintainer permission. And the reason for that is um, because when we see uh, stage adoption and feature adoption in GitLab, it's mainly driven by invited users. And these users may not have the proper level of permission uh, to access the feature. Uh, therefore, it kind of raises a question of like, how can they uh, perform the task? Um, but the, the main uh, aspect here is from the maintainer perspective. So let's check this out. Um, <clears throat> so I have here um, one of my test projects um, that is on the trial so I can access all features. Um, so the first thing I would do is go through the navigation um, and most likely monitor um, this is where I would expect to find it. And this is where I am finding it. So I can see on call schedule and escalation policies. So I'm going to start by with on call scheduled. And here I land on uh, a nice empty state um, that states create on call schedule in GitLab, wrote alerts directly to specific members of your team, add a schedule. Um, I really like this empty state because it's straightforward. It's really getting to the point and the call to action is really engaging. Uh, the only thing that I would have expected from a feature perspective is maybe to have the ability to um, import a schedule from a third party. Uh, Cause I imagine that maybe my team is using uh, GitLab as a tool, but maybe we already have like on our, our on-call schedule set up somewhere else. Uh, most likely in Google Calendar or maybe in an Excel sheet. And I would have liked to have the option to just import all that and not recreate everything from scratch. Uh, that would have definitely like pushed me to uh, adopt this even more. Um, but for the sake of this core card, I'm just going to create it from scratch. Um, so I'm clicking on Add Schedule and um, ask to name uh, the schedule, give it a description, and pick a time zone. Um, I like the time zone touch. I think it's uh, really nice to have. Um, so yeah, so for the name, I honestly have no specific idea on how to call this. And I kind of wish that um, I had some kind of suggestion. Um, so maybe as a helper, we kind of like here, we have time zone and we would say set the, no, oh, okay, I got in here, uh, set 
the default time zone for the schedule for a participant. Like I wish I would have something for a name, like a suggestion uh, about how to name my schedule. Um, and yeah, and clicking away directly fired an alert. Um, so that's that's okay. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of pushing you to uh, make sure that you uh, filled everything before submitting. Um, but I don't know. I mean, in some perspective, you might want to let people fill everything, submit, and then tell them when they have errors. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to call the schedule, I don't know, uh, dev on calls, no description. Um, and then the time zone is going to be, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm time zone. Um, so I'm going to add the schedule. Okay, so here I have my schedule created and I have a nice tip alert here, uh, try adding a rotation. So it's basically pushing me towards the next action. Um, so my schedule has been successfully created. Now I need to add people to the schedule. Um, but then it also is saying uh, I need to enable notification for the schedule by creating an escalation policy. Um, okay, so that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's let's try it out. Um, yeah, so I see the add rotation, add a rotation here. I just, I don't see a primary CTA in this page. Like we have add a schedule, uh, but maybe add a rotation should be a primary. I, I don't know, it's just, it's not, directly clear what is the next step. Um, so thankfully the tip alert is here to tell me uh, the process. Um, okay, I'm gonna add a rotation. So I have to add a name, so give me rotation. And in this one, uh, or no, maybe, maybe this one. The rotation length is going to be one day. Please no rotation with shift R less than four hours are currently not supported in the weekly review. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, weekly review. Um, so yeah, it starts on, say tomorrow at nine. Uh, yes, I'm going to enable an end date. I'm going to say the same day Rotation and the time must come after start time. Yeah, yeah, all right, that makes sense. I just, I just wish that this would have somewhat pushed the hour I set here from like one more, so that I didn't get the other, the the alert here. Um, I mean, it's nice to have it, obviously, but I just wish that it would kind of take into account that it's not specifically me that triggered it in some way. So to have it, for example, this start at 10. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say that I'm on call until 12. Uh, restricted time intervals. So yeah, so that's, that's where I'm a bit confused between what's the difference between starting on having the end date and then the time interval, I just wish that we had a little bit of like text around here uh, to explain the, the difference um, between all these. So anyway, I'm gonna try it for this rotation on call will be, yeah, so from nine to 12. Um, that's a bit redundant. I don't know if I'm doing it well, actually. I'm gonna add this rotation. All right, so I can see my rotation here. I can see who's doing the rotation, starts and ends. I can see the time and time zone uh, from day view, there's a day view. Uh, yeah, next day, yeah, I'm here. Cool, and then I succeed, yeah, I get the success message. Um, that's great. The only thing is that it's removing the tool tip, uh, the, the tip alert, sorry. Um, so 
now I kind of remember that if I want this person to be notified, I have to go to create an escalation policy, but because the alert told me, and if I were to do this in two different days, I don't know if I would have remembered that this is where I needed to go. So I wish that the alert that was here previously would still be there or would be replaced by some kind of text so that it doesn't get lost basically. Um, but okay, I'm gonna create my escalation policy. Okay, and then, yeah, so same thing. I think the interstate is great here. What I, I just feel a bit disturbing in a way is that I have to go to another page uh, to do this because it seems like uncle schedule and escalation policies are tied together and you cannot use one without the other. So I don't know why it's a separate page. I would have maybe preferred to have it directly um, in the schedule page or directly even in the schedule. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go through this page. Create uh, discussion policy in GitLab, set up a discussion policy in the Frank Ruiz page and when in the event the first user's page don't respond. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, the only thing that I, I wish I would specify is like how this person get notified. Um, for now, I feel like it, this is not clear. Like, I don't know if they receive an email. I don't know if I can um, add the possibility for them to receive a text as well. Um, so yeah, I wish that would be specified here. But other than that, it's again, it's like the first empty state. It's, it's pretty straightforward um, and engaging. So yeah, I guess I have to name my escalation policy Again, uh, so same thing, I wish I would have had some kind of helper around here to give me a hint because this can be a bit blocking for me to just come up with a name. Uh, so I don't know how I'm going to call it actually. Um, okay, is it test escalation? No, just escalation one maybe. Uh, no description. And escalation rules. Um, if alert is not acknowledged in zero minutes, then yeah, I, I really like this. Uh, this is really great. This is exactly what I would expect from this type of uh, interface. Like having some kind of conditional statement is really uh, making it clear about as to what, what is the escalation policy. So yeah, if the alert is not acknowledged in, say, 15 minutes? Um, no, let's say five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, then email on call user and schedule. Select the schedule, then on calls. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I want. And then I can add an additional rule as a fallback um, and I think I'm gonna do it because the job to be done was about uh, paging check yeah the job to be done was about paging someone else um, if the first person is not being notified so creating the fallback so I'm gonna do it I'm gonna add an additional rule um, so if the alert is not let's say resolved in say 60 minutes. Um, scheduled, yeah. So yeah, again, like the, the alert is firing a bit fast. <laughs> um, it's better to have an alert than no alert, uh, but I would just prefer that it come after I'm trying to submit. Um, so then I'm going to email. Okay, so this is clear. Uh, I know yeah, email as well, like, okay, now now I'm kind of reassured about that. Uh, I know that people are going to be emailed. And I'm going to add email another person. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Cool. So it looks like I created my installation. Um, 
the thing is, I didn't have any some kind of success message or reassurance. Um, I, I seeing I'm seeing that this is in the UI. I'm seeing it written that if the alert is not acknowledged, this person will be pinged. Um, if the alert is not resolved, another person will be pinged. I I see that, but I have no real way um, to verify this, um, and the UI is not kind of reassuring me with an alert saying, hey, everything went well. Um, rest assured that these people will be paying because right now it feels like the only way for me to verify if this works um, is to basically have a problem during an on-call and see if the alerts are triggering, are firing, sorry. So I just wish that there was some kind of way to test um, the escalation policies when they're created. Uh, or at least some kind of reassuring message to tell you that everything is uh, okay and ready to go. Um, so yeah, that's that's the experience for a maintainer in a paid group. Um, so using the different heuristics, uh, this experience grade as a B minus, uh, which is good. So the heuristic is met in almost every way with no more than minor exceptions. Uh, the task is streamlined, pleasant, and highly usable. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, honestly. So what I thought was really good in this experience was the empty states, uh, the conditional statements for the escalation policies, and the tip alert. Uh, thankfully, I had it because if I was if I was not guided by this alert, I don't know if I would have been able to do it this fast. Um, but in terms of potential improvements, uh, in terms of the visibility of system status, I think we could apply the PKN rule and reassure people when they create an escalation policies because this can be a bit stress inducing if I'm not sure that those uh, escalation policies are going to work. Um, then in terms of setup support, we could maybe do a bit better in helping user naming their schedule and policy uh, and specify the alert type or the notification type beforehand because I would have expected to see this in the empty state and not in the um, uh, conditional statement of the escalation policy, but it's it's still uh, mentioned, but a bit late in my opinion. But that's that again, that's not a big deal. Um, and then the uh, alert, uh, the tip, on the page that left uh, was a bit surprising um, because, like I said, if I do this in in two different days, um, or maybe like one, if I want to set my escalation policy one or two weeks after I created my schedule, uh, will I remember that I need to switch page to do it? Uh, I don't know. Um, and then we could also improve flexibility and efficiency of use. Uh, so it's, like I said, it's suggest third party integration to streamline a bit the setup phase and lower down the adoption barrier and try to solve a bit this context switching situation um, to have escalation policy in the schedule maybe so I don't have to like move uh, over different pages and lose context of the schedule. Uh, all right, so this is for this is the grade for the main job to be done. Um, now, from the non-maintainer perspective, I'm gonna do it. Do I have it? Uh, yeah, I have it here. Um, so this is the same. Uh, actually, I might need to delete things, or not. Maybe it's gonna work. Uh, this is the exact same group. The only difference is that I um, switch on a different user that is the developer of this group, and I have the same empty state. And I'm going to click on add a schedule. Um, so I have the same, the exact same model. So I'm going to say, I don't know, schedule two, schedule two. Uh, same thing for the time zone. And add the schedule. Yeah, and then I have an error. Uh, and the error is. GraphQL error, the reason that you're attempting to access does not exist, or you don't have permission to perform this action. So it's okay, it's kind of clear. Uh, so it seems like I don't have the permission to do it. 
Um, so at least that's good to know. But I, I just wish that I would have known that beforehand, uh, before starting to uh, add the schedule, um, because that I wouldn't have engaged with it if I knew I would have tried to find a way to get that permission first. Um, and at this point, I I don't have like I don't know too much how to do it besides trying to check the members' information and see who's the maintainer. So this person is the owner, so he would be able to give me the uh, maintainer permission because right now I'm just a developer. So I would probably reach out to him, uh, I don't know, either with Slack, email, or if we're working together in the same office, just trying to reach out to this person. Um, but maybe we should have a way to do that from the empty state to kind of request access to a specific feature. Um, but as far as like my journey goes as a non-maintainer, this is where it stops because I cannot do anything. I just need to request permission. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I excluded this um, flow from the grading experience, but like I said, I think it was important to just check it out because if I were invited to this project without the proper permission, I would kind of expect to have a way um, to be able to ask for it. Um, so yeah, so the good thing is like at least I have another room telling me what's going on. Uh, I can understand that I don't have the, the good level of permission. Um, but what could be improved is probably clarifying it earlier. Uh, another thing is maybe lowering down the permission level. I don't know if that's possible, but I don't, I, I'm not sure why is a maintainer level uh, permission. Especially like if we think again back to the personas being software developer, for example, I don't know if all of them are maintainer of the project or if the one that should set the on-call schedule are maintainers. Um, so maybe the permission should be lower down. Um, and then, yeah, another thing that we could do is proactively help people uh, reach out to the owner uh, and maintainer to get the right level of permission. Um, so to conclude, say that um, overall the experience is intuitive uh, and straightforward, but it has some context switching. Uh, it also could be faster with third-party integration. Uh, the setup support is pretty good. Um, for example, this alert uh, that I had, the gray alert, was really doing a good job at explaining me the different steps. Um, and the form also had a couple of helpers. I just wish that there were more, uh, especially for naming. Um, it can be a bit blocking when you don't know how to name things. So having some suggestion would be definitely helpful uh, to move uh, forward kind of faster um, and it would be also easier. Um, and then we're also missing um, the peak and roll, so kind of celebrating, but also reassuring the user when they finished to set up escalation policies. Um, I think this would be really helpful to really nail the confident part of the job to be done. Um, because it can be a bit uh, friction inducing, I would say. Like, I might be a bit worried as to uh, is this going to work or not. Um, at this point, I feel like I, I should be certain that this is going to work uh, moving forward. So, I mentioned uh, a way to test the escalation policy, but that's a, a, some kind of a big feature to add. So, maybe a simple step could could be to just have a, a successful message um, um, when the user completes um, the escalation policy. Uh, so that's it for this scorecard. Thank you for watching.